Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're going to be working on this paper baseball hat that I made for my cousin. I'll be showing you where I got the pattern from, how I fixed it, how I printed it, and how I put everything together. So let's get started. Okay, so here I am just on Cricut Design Space and as always we're just going to start with a clean canvas. If you want to know what pattern I used, this is the one I got from Etsy. This is what the pattern looks like and it even has these little balls right here. It has a large size and a small size. And once you make your purchase, you'll have a file like this. When you open the file, you're going to have a bunch of different formats. You just need the SVG one. If you don't have a scoring tool, you'll just select this one. But if you have a scoring tool, I suggest you use it because it makes it a lot easier. Today, I'm going to be making the big size because my cousin requested a Saint's hat. And if you need instructions, it also has instructions on how to like put it together and what the dimension should be as well. You can select to download one file at a time, or you could just do all pieces in one file, which I think is a lot easier. So I just selected this one and saved it to my computer. After that, we just go to upload, upload image, and we look for that file right here and open it and upload. Now we add to our canvas and it's going to be really big. So just zoom out. And this is what the pattern should look like. The file comes all attached, so just ungroup it. And all the pieces are already kind of together. But I did make the mistake of printing as is. But if you could see here, the score line is set as a basic cut. So that means when you try to cut this out, it's going to cut out all your little uh, tags right here. And we don't want that. So just go one by one, click on the basic cut line, and just change it to score. Okay, and I zoomed in a little bit just so you could see how these lines are now like dashes because they we have changed them to score lines. So once they change to score lines, they are dashes. Uh, I'm not going to be using this, so I'm just going to um, take it out. Next, I also noticed that although they are grouped together, they're not attached. So meaning if you go over to make it, all the score lines here are separated from their pieces. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So let's cancel that. Since they're already grouped, once you click on it, you're selecting both the score line and the piece. All you have to do is attach and just go one by one on all the pieces with score lines. Okay, that's about it. Next, I usually like to do these little pins, these little dots here and the hexagon a darker color. But since she wanted a Black Saints hat, everything's just going to be printed on black paper. But again, you decide how you want it. This is the top of the hat. This is the rim that goes around. These two pieces go together and this is just the insert that goes right on top here once you put the um, rim around it. Next, you can't just cut them like this, but if you go over to make it, my paper is 8 by 11 letter size. So here it's telling me that I'm going to be using 10 pieces of paper. And to me that looks like a big waste. So what I like to do is kind of preset my pages. So I'm going to zoom out again. And I'll enter a um, shape that's the size of my paper. Okay, and now this is my paper. So I just kind of try to fit as many pieces as I can in one page. Okay, and once you have your page, you just move it and hit attach. And now those pieces are just going to print out in one page. And there we are. As you can see, by doing this, we can maximize our space. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven pages instead of nine, which to me is a win-win <laughs> situation. So we don't need this anymore. And then we just go over to make it. And here you can see this is where your paper will go. Just be careful. These go sideways. So just place your paper how this goes as well. Here I'm going to use the 65 pound light cardstock setting and in the tools you have to have a scoring wheel or a scoring stylus if you want to use the scoring feature. I don't have the scoring wheel so I'm going to change over here to scoring stylus and the five point blade. I think this is actually a lot easier because the scoring tool goes in clamp A and the, and the blade goes in clamp B so you don't have to be switching back and forth because the scoring wheel only goes in clamp B. Um, but yeah, now we just go over and we can start making it. 
here's just my mat and I'm using this paper from Michaels it's about five dollars but it usually goes on sale and it goes around like three dollars which is a really good buy so we're just gonna put our paper right on top and now we can load it up to our machine here we're just gonna load it and this is where clamp B is and clamp A. If you had the scoring wheel, you would be changing this one out um, a lot. <laughs> but I don't have the wheel, I have the stylus, and the stylus goes in A, so it makes it a lot easier for me, but it's whatever you have and whatever your preference. So I'm just gonna let this fall in here. It does like a little clip, don't push too hard, and then just clamp it. And now we can just click go. Okay, so here I have everything cut and you should have these little button thingies, six of these. You should also have this little, what is it, hexagon that goes right on top of the hat. Six pieces, including this one that goes, you know, on the back of the head. The front of the hat, two of these to go right on top of each other. And then this is the insert that goes right on top here. So I like to start off by just doing the easiest and just gluing just basically these two together. So I got this one from Michaels. I saw everybody was using it and recommending it. I was using just Elmer's glue and that was working fine, but I was curious about this one. So we're just gonna try it out. And this was $2, so it's not even expensive or anything. And so we're just gonna go around. You can put glue in the middle. I don't do it. I just don't think it's necessary, but um, you can do whatever you like and just put it right on top. And I like to just grab a spatula or something flat and then just flatten out the glue. And I like to put this one first. Uh, just make sure that your score lines are on the outside because that is like the rim and what we want to see. And then we just place this on top. And I like to just make it as even as possible here. So just uh, see how it looks better. And I know it's hard to see because it's all black, but uh, this is like how even it should look. And then just use your spatula. Just like that. Next, I'm gonna work on the pieces that go like around the hat. We're just gonna be using these. And I know it's hard to see, but you could see kind of the score lines here. That's why I say it's a lot easier if you have score lines because when you fold it, it's already super straight and you don't have to worry about it being all wobbly or anything. You can also fold this one in, but I'm not gonna do that till the end. So I'm just gonna be folding these for now. Once it's folded, I just grab my glue and then put some right on top of it. And I don't put much glue, I just kind of make sure that it's smeared all around and I make sure that I at least get like the top parts right here so it can be like nice and even. So once you have that, you just grab your next piece and make sure that the score lines are matching the bottom piece. You don't want to put them like upside down or anything. So it goes like this. And then we just line it up to how this goes. And this is kind of what it should look like. Just be aware that it's not perfectly straight. It curves as you can see. So make sure that you are doing the best you can to get the lines to match up as even as possible. To make sure that in case I'm pulling on it or something, it doesn't come off. I like to just grab some tape and then just put it right in the inside just to give it a better hold. Just like that, and now I move on. So again, we're just gonna fold in, put some glue. Now make sure that you put this piece matching the other pieces, and then we glue it. Okay, now time for our tape. And here we are. So again, we're just gonna repeat the same steps all the way around the band and then I'll be right back. Okay, and here we are. This is what you should have. Now all these pieces, now you can fold them in if you didn't do so yet. And here we are, these are all folded in now. Now I like to place this one right on top and you just have to align it basically to all the shapes here. You could. 
You can see here is the hexagon and you know, the other hexagon goes right on top. So now just more glue around. Something like this. I like to be really close to the edges, but not too much because if the glue leaks out, then it gets all over everything else and it makes these marks and you don't want that. So just be careful with not putting too much glue. Okay, and this is what we should have now. We basically have the bottom piece. Once this is done, we have our little hexagon that goes right in the inside. So you can either put glue in the inside or glue on this. It doesn't really matter. Moving on to this, it's basically the same thing as the rim here, except that it does get a little tricky when you get closer to the end just because everything gets so tight in there. But we're basically going to be doing the same thing again. So just fold these. And again, we're just going to line it up as best we can. Make sure you get really close to the edges and make sure you watch out because, you know, they do curve in. So you don't want it to be too in or too out. You want to get it as close as possible. So I start at the bottom and just hold it. And then I work my way up. And let me tell you, I really do recommend you getting this one. I can notice the difference right away and this is making it a lot easier. Uh, but again, I'm just going to keep going, fold these in, keep attaching, and then I'll be right back. Okay, and here we go. This is the cap, and this is what it should look like. Now, this is where that little hexagon goes, right on the top. And as you can see, the hexagon lines up with these lines, and that's what we want. So this is what we should have. And of course, these little ones just go right where these holes are. Now I'm just going to go around and put all of them just like this. Last part is to just add your finishing touches. This is the logo we made, so I'm going to place it right in the front, but of course you can put whatever you like. And I'll go something like this and just stick it right on. And here are the stickers I made to just go right in the front. And I'll have the image on my Facebook page if you guys want to use it. I made some small ones for the small caps and then these big ones go right here. And I printed them on glossy printable vinyl, so as you can see they're already shiny. And it goes right in the middle here. And here we are. This is the finished look. Of course, you can add more to it if you like. You could put something on the sides. And since this is a box, you can put whatever you want inside. I've seen people put chocolate covered strawberries. I've seen people just put candies. Sometimes they make like those photo bombs that like open when you, you know, open it. Uh, but yeah, you could just put whatever you want in here. This is basically your box. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. As you can see, it was very easy to just put together a box. If you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Please also head over to my Instagram and TikTok for a lot more pictures and videos of my work. And thank you so much for watching.